General Asthma Education. What is asthma? Asthma is the most common chronic illness in children. One out of every 10 children has asthma and this number continues to rise. This video will help you learn to care for a child with asthma and hopefully decrease the amount of asthma symptoms he or she may experience. Asthma causes your child's airway to become inflamed, swollen, and irritated. The muscles around the airways tighten, making it difficult for air to get in and out. Children with asthma may have some or all of the following symptoms. Coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, rapid breathing, anxiety, or chest pain. Asthma symptoms may occur daily, several times a week, or only during certain times of the year. Many things can trigger asthma symptoms, including illness, dust, mold, animals, allergens, cigarette smoke, or cold air. Every child may have different symptoms. Your child may not experience exactly the same symptoms with every asthma exacerbation. Asthma can present itself in different degrees of severity. Your child may have mild, moderate, or severe symptoms. Mild asthma symptoms would be described as fouls. Your child may experience cough or wheezing, but without significant changes in respiratory pattern or worker breathing. A child with mild asthma symptoms should be alert, have normal coloring, and will speak in full sentences. For mild symptoms, your child should begin using their quick relief, otherwise known as rescue medication inhaler, such as albuterol, as recommended per their physician or per the yellow zone of their asthma home management plan. Moderate asthma symptoms would be described as follows. In addition to cough and wheezing, your child may experience chest tightness or shortness of breath. Breathing may be faster than usual and your child may speak in short sentences because it's hard for them to breathe. Your child may experience retractions, such as skin pulling in between the ribs or at their neck and may be less active than normal. For moderate symptoms, your child should begin using their quick relief, also known as rescue medication, such as albuterol, as per their physician or the yellow zone of the home management plan. Severe asthma symptoms occur when your child has constant or unremitting cough or wheezing. They may appear tired. In this phase, your child's breathing may be very fast or may appear to slow down despite worsening symptoms. Retractions are generally present and children may make a grunting noise. A child with a severe asthma attack may seem less aware of their surroundings. For severe symptoms, give your child albuterol per your physician's recommendations or per the red zone of the asthma home management plan and take your child immediately to their physician or to the closest emergency room or call 911 and be transported to the nearest hospital. When your child has asthma, several things may trigger the airways to become inflamed and swollen, causing an increase in asthma symptoms. It is important to try and find out what those triggers are for your child and learn ways to help him or her avoid them. Most children's asthma can be managed at home with the care of their doctor and never require an emergency room visit or hospital admission. The most common asthma trigger for children is a viral illness. While this cannot always be prevented, things that may help keep your child healthy are good hand washing and making sure your child gets the flu vaccine every year. During winter months, it's important to monitor your child closely for symptoms of their asthma as weather changes and illness may increase the severity of their symptoms. Another trigger of asthma is exposure to cigarette or pipe smoke. Secondhand smoke can trigger asthma episodes and increase the severity of symptoms. Although it may be a helpful step, smoking outside won't eliminate smoke exposure. It is still on your clothes and hair when you come back in. This alone can trigger asthma symptoms. Allergens are another trigger for children with asthma. These include animals, pollen from trees, grasses and weeds, as well as mold house dust mites, cockroaches, and mice droppings. If you notice your child having allergy symptoms such as runny, stuffy nose, sneezing, itchy, watery eyes, discuss with your child's doctor as allergy symptoms may trigger asthma. Discuss ways to help control allergy symptoms. Allergen avoidance is recommended. Avoiding these triggers is the key to preventing asthma symptoms. 
Here are some tips to help avoid the allergens we just went over. Stay indoors during the midday and afternoon when the pollen count is high. Avoid sources of mold such as wet leaves, lawn mowing, and sandboxes. Wash bed covers, clothes, and stuffed toys once a week in hot water. Limit the amount of stuffed animals in the home. Use insect gel or traps instead of sprays to eliminate cockroaches and mice from the home. Avoid eating in the living room or bedrooms. Keep windows closed or take a bath if outside to lessen exposure to outdoor allergens. Other common triggers for children with asthma are household cleaners and strong odors and sprays. When cleaning your house, if possible, do it when your child is not at home. Air out your home after using cleaning products. Open a window for a short amount of time. Spray cleaners on rags instead of on the surfaces you're cleaning. This will reduce the amount of cleaner floating around in the air to breathe in. Use non-scented household cleaning products whenever possible. Avoid strong perfumes and perfumed cosmetics such as talcum powder and hairspray. Do not use room or carpet deodorizers. Medications are used to both prevent asthma symptoms and treat symptoms once they have occurred. Some medications are to be used every day. Others are just for use when symptoms occur. There are two general groups of asthma medications. Bronchodilators, known as your quick relief or rescue medications, and controllers. Bronchodilators are quick relief medications. They open narrow airways by relaxing the muscles that constrict them. They relieve coughing, wheezing, breathlessness, and chest pain. If your child develops a respiratory illness with cough, you should start giving their bronchodilator every four hours unless otherwise directed by your child's pediatrician. Albuterol is one of the most common bronchodilators. It works best by being inhaled either with a nebulizer or meter dose inhaler, otherwise known as an MDI. It may cause mild jitteriness and irritability in children. Albuterol works very quickly, usually within 15 to 20 minutes, and should last for four hours. If you think your child needs it more than every four hours, you should call their pediatrician. Even if your child doesn't have asthma symptoms all the time, their asthma may require a controller medication if they have frequent exacerbations with viral illnesses or if albuterol is needed for symptoms more than twice a week. There are several types of controller medications. Anti-inflammatory therapy or inhaled corticosteroids are controller medications that decrease the swelling and inflammation in the airways. These drugs may also reduce mucus buildup in the airways. These medications may be given by inhaling them from a nebulizer, MDI, or dry powder inhaler. They help prevent asthma symptoms but will not stop symptoms once they have started. Drugs in this category include budesonide, fluticasone, and beclomethazone. Controller medication should be taken every day as directed, whether healthy or sick, to help control your child's asthma or allergies. Doses should not be missed. However, do not double dose if a dose is missed. Please work to have a better plan to remember to use medication, such as cell phone alarms, reminder notes, or changing where your prescription is stored to see it and remember to use it. These are all ideas for how to remember to give medications. Anti-leukotriene drugs are another class of controller medications. They are taken by mouth and have few side effects. They work by blocking leukotrienes, which cause inflammation, fluid retention, mucus secretion, and constriction in the lungs. They work best in mild cases of asthma. They may be used alone or in combination with an inhaled corticosteroid. Drugs in this category include monoleucus. Your child's doctor will develop an asthma home management plan, which is also sometimes called an asthma action plan, specific for your child. It is categorized into green zone, yellow zone, and red zone. Following this plan will help to guide you on how to care for your child's asthma at home and when to call the doctor versus when to return to the emergency room. This action plan should include if your child needs medication on a daily basis to control persistent asthma symptoms, how to recognize a change or increase in asthma symptoms, what medication should be used to treat increasing symptoms. 
warning signs that your child's asthma is not under control. Going to the doctor or hospital often for asthma symptoms. Hospital admission for asthma symptoms. Your child is coughing during the night more than twice a month when not sick. Your child is coughing or having symptoms with daytime activity or using albuterol more than twice a week when not sick. Your child's asthma symptoms last longer and do not respond well to treatment. Your child is missing school or activities regularly due to asthma symptoms. To control your child's asthma, remember to learn all you can about asthma and ask questions. Monitor your child as they take their medications as prescribed. Avoid triggers. Carry your child's quick reliever inhaler and holding chamber at all times. Follow your child's asthma home management plan. Schedule regular follow-up appointment with your doctor to assess your child's asthma control. If you have any questions or concerns about your child's asthma, call your doctor.